friendly greetings! <laughs> it's Torley Linden here with a quick and easy video tutorial on how to do some pretty badass colored rainbow lighting in Second Life. Now, I will show you an example of an image that has gotten me some lovely compliments, thank you residents, about questions. How do you do that? I want to show you just that. It's personal empowerment time. Something I'd like to introduce you to if you're not already familiar. If you just Google search for light leak and look for images. Beyond rainbows, often we can find so much inspiration. And of course, I need to disclaim, use a legal source, don't tread on copyright, respect intellectual property. We could use something like that though, just for a test. We're not going to use this commercially. Full size. Okay, I know it has a bit of a border. It's all right. This is just... The point is to show you how easily this can be done. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go ahead and save that image to my desktop. Remember light leaks and this tab. I just want to show you there is a really cool pack. If you just go to this URL here, it's a great pack of a lot of light leak images that will be used. Well, I actually have used many of these in second life. So let's speaking of, let's go back into second life and Key thing is that in me menu preferences, make sure in graphics tab, you have ultra mode on. You need to have a fairly powerful computer because light lighting, not lightning, <laughs> though that would be cool too. Lighting in shadows needs to be on. So if you need to toggle that and specifically make sure, yes. And if it performs slowly or doesn't show, unfortunately, your computer is likely not powerful enough, but here it is, we have a real shadow. Next thing, we want to turn it to midnight. We're just in a public sandbox where we can build. And then we go to world menu and sun. Let's go ahead and make it midnight. Who turned out the lights? Like a classic Ninja Turtle line, yeah? Okie dokie, let's go to build now and let's upload that image which we downloaded from the web. So get it from the web into Second Life. We're on the desktop and it's right there. So we're just going to play with this one. Just going to play with it. You can use any texture. That's part of the fun. Ones with variance in color work especially well. And as that's uploading, we'll right click because we're multitaskers. We're going to build, click to make a cube, lift this cube off the ground. So we're going to see where the light is going to project. Lift it off a reasonable distance. And right here in light, in the features tab, go ahead and check that. And then we are going to, well, you notice how you might be familiar with, you can make the light different colors, but it's so much more fascinating with what we call a projector. And we're going to go ahead and scroll down to the textures. It should show up there. Click and drag that right onto this watch and wait for it to res. Oh, almost a voila. We need to adjust some of these parameters. So let's turn up the ambiance. Notice it's more intense. The fall off, let's turn that down. Let's increase the radius to 20. Now notice it's starting to come together and the focus can be a little sharper if you want. Now the field of view here, you can make this bigger and as you do, it can get blurrier. So it will have these certain kinds of color bands. Notice that. And I think about 2.5 will be good for the purposes of this. Now, specific cases will vary, so you'll want to experiment. Let's go ahead and drag this down to where we can attach it. Otherwise, you're going to grope in vain. Be careful of that. And notice my avatar. If I zoom in closely, notice how his back is lit. Isn't that cool already? I want to right click, and now I want to put on and attach it to my head and my nose. Be close enough for that. The reason why is because there are places you cannot build we're going to go to one of those places now, and I want to show you what you need to do to adjust the light, and then you can take your picture. Let's go ahead to Leroy. Leroy? No, not that one. And right up here, you notice this is the slurl, and there's a strawberry festival going on. Ah, ambient sounds. How nice. So you may look kind of silly, but the world will look cool. As the snow starts to fall, I'm just going to look around in the darkness and woo, what's going on there? So we want to change the focus of the light, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to walk up to what's going on here. And it's res notice and it's showing up, but we want to cast this light over. <laughs> and this is the funny transition from awkward to being a badass. So you get up pretty close. Doesn't have to be totally close and you can right click edit and then you can move this up here 
and then you can rotate with the control key. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts as I do this, but you can adjust with this as well. And look, look, look what's happening. Oh, isn't that awesome? And we can get closer. One more thing is that if you feel you are trying to take a picture and you don't want to see the light source in the way, you can make it transparent after you've positioned it. And that can be accomplished very easily as well. Let me just get up on this perch and let me go forth and let me tilt this a bit more towards the downish angle, not very technical. And there, to compare, we didn't have a light, it would be like that. Thanks to our prowess in about six minutes or so, there we have it. And like I promised, texture tab, turn the transparency to 100% and it's invisible. I'll go ahead and hide the whole user interface. And there, there we go. There we go. There we go. And the birds are singing and it's a lovely day in Second Life. Enjoy. Enjoy.